Hello, Hoovians, and welcome to the third channel. Now, today, we're doing another fantastic interview. I'm on the roll with these. And today, I'm here with a very special guest. Another one from the classic um, UK-British TV show Rainbow. The one, the only, Malcolm Lord. Hello, everybody. So, so how did you get into acting? How did I get into acting? Well, about a million years ago. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm a lot older than you, obviously. Um, no, when I, I did um, plays and things like that at school, and when I left school, uh, a friend of mine was in a, a local drama group, an amateur drama group. So I joined them. And I'd been there, I don't know, three or four years, done lots of shows. And we had a professional actress uh, come and do some workshops and stuff with us. And it was her that said, oh, darling, why don't you go professional? You're so good. And like a fool, I thought, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, and I just thought, well, this is my hobby. But if someone would pay me to do it, that would be perfection. Mm. So at the age of um, 20, uh, I gave up my job in Lloyds Bank as a cashier. Uh, much to the despair of my parents. You're giving up a job in a bank to go off and do acting? Um, so in 1976, I went off to Mount View Theatre School in London, mm. um, which is still going, um, uh, and did a three-year acting course, uh, which was quite, it was quite tough in that uh, 45 uh, students started the three-year course and 15 graduated so two-thirds were lost either because they decided it wasn't for them or maybe they hadn't reached the required standard and of those there's really uh, only myself and an actress called Denise Welsh do you know Denise Welsh mm. the actress you some of your viewers well I'm sure yeah they, they, they uh, might do the name uh, is the bell somewhere she's a blonde haired girl she's on loose women a lot um, oh yeah yeah I, yeah I don't know I don't know and you used to be married to Tim Healy oh yeah, yeah. um so we're the we're the only two still at it more or less uh but that that's that's how I got into acting um that was a long answer to a short question um uh, and then in 1979 uh, we graduated uh, which is crikey, 42 years ago. Wow. And I was very fortunate in that I'd done an audition uh, in my last week at college and I graduated on the Sunday night and started my first job on Monday morning. Wow. Um, very which, lucky. That was very lucky indeed. Very lucky. Um, now, now, as an actor you, yourself, would you recommend people to go and do drama school? I think if if it's a passion within you, you, you should. I think you should have a go. Uh, if you can have a backup plan, you know you've got some qualifications, and that you can then, if it doesn't work out, uh, you can come back and get a you know a decent job. I th there would be nothing worse, I think, than sort of getting to my age. Uh, and you've been stuck working in an office or a jam factory or whatever all your life, and you're still thinking, oh, I would have loved to have done that. Mm. So I think it's best to, to have a go. But, you know, if it doesn't work out, you know, at least you've had a go. And there's always um, amateur theatre, of course, which, which, is, which is great. Um, some, I would almost say sometimes, it's almost better uh, staying in the amateur world because you get to play parts that perhaps you wouldn't get given. Yeah. Uh, you might do three, four, five shows a year, whereas some actors are lucky if they get one job a year. Mm. Um, so, you know, there's still, you know, that's still worthwhile looking at an amateur, a career in amateur theatre as well. Yeah. And, and for you, your most popular and the most famous role is a bungle, but but where did that begin? Because you were the third incarnation of, of Bungle. I was, yes. Um, well, the, th the first incarnation, I think, uh, uh, he, John Lee, he, I think he did one 
one series and then it was Stanley and Stanley Bates did, did a lot of them. Um, and then I joined in 1981 uh, as a puppeteer for George. Uh, so then it was myself and Ronnie LeDrew, I know you've, you've interviewed. Uh, and we were then George and Zippy for, for quite a few years until Stanley. Uh, the, some of the cast used to write the scripts as well for Rainbow. And there was a, cha a change of producers and they thought, well, it's perhaps, it's a bit much to have the, the cast writing it as well. You know, let's get some fresh, whatever. And I think that Stanley really thought he'd rather write um, the scripts than, than necessarily be in them. Um, so he, he stepped aside and uh, I then, was it promotion? I suppose it was a promotion <laughs> <laughs> because I was allowed to walk and talk at the same time yeah. um, as opposed to being a puppeteer. And as an actor, I suppose, I suppose I was always more of an actor than a puppeteer. So I, it, it was better for me. Um, I had done, uh, we, before that happened, we were doing a stage version oh, yeah. of, of Rainbow and um, a few people, not all the cast could do it because they had other commitments like Ronnie and Stanley. So I actually did Bungle on the tour um, before I did him on the telly, yeah. if, if, if that makes sense. Um, and from then on, when, when Rainbow ended, uh, Bungle, George and Zippy went, went into quite a few pantomimes and stuff. Um, and there's another story there about the next phase of my career of uh, becoming a pantomime dame which I've been for the past good few years. Yeah. yeah. And and with, with with having like it, it happens a lot within the world of like pantomime and children's scene where, where classic puppet characters appear in the TV and then once once the TV once their shows are like ending, they move on to their their theatre debuts like Battle Brush is a is another popular one that's yeah in there. But how did you like how did you keep the voice like very similar from all the others because it'd be hard to keep Bungle's voice going. Yes, because I mean, obviously you don't want to have, uh, because it was the same uh, costume, mm. Stanley and I were similar heights. So, so Bungle looked the same. Um, so I had to try and sort of, I'm not, I'm not an impressionist, uh, but I tried to pick up the same sort of tone and quality of Bungle. And even now, sometimes when, um, uh, you know, you look at an old Rainbow website and I'm thinking, am I George or Bungle in this? I can't remember. Um, and sometimes it takes a little while. I thought, oh, no, no, that's that's Stanley and I'm I'm George or whatever. Um, and then I suppose it's it's like Roy Skelton, who did the voices for George and Zippy. If, if you look at early episodes, the voices do, you know, Zippy got more... Um, not aggressive, but but yeah. he, he was much slower and more ponderous and he got more and more, yeah, and all that. And then of course, Ronnie then um, started doing Zippy's yeah. voice as well. Um, but it is, it, it is, you know, you want to do it the same, but you want to make it your own as well, yeah. if, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but I loved, I loved doing George. Um, he's here, he's here. Um, a very old scruffy George, but he is here. Wow. Um, to say hello, um, I, I mean, and he used to say, oh, "Hello, everybody. <laughs> my name's George." <laughs> that's that's my impression. Wow. <laughs> um, so, um, but yes, I took over as George. Yeah. Um, again, my my whole career has, has basically been an accident. Um, <laughs> nothing is. Very few times when I've gone for an audition if I had then got the job. Yeah. Most, most of my work is because you you know somebody and you know that they're looking for, it's like I knew Ronnie before yeah. I went on to Rainbow because um, I worked for a company he'd worked for. He may have talked talk, talk to you about uh, a lady called Violet Philpot. Yeah. Um, who, who had, Ronnie worked for her, I did, uh, John Thurtle, Ian Allen who did uh, Ian Allen, who created Button Moon, um, and John, who made all the puppets. They, we all worked for Violet at some point. So she was our sort of um, uh, mentor, if you like. Mm. Um, 
because she did actually do some puppeteering on on Rainbow as well initially, and it's always the case then. Um, before me, the main puppeteer for George was Valerie Hebberden, uh, who was a lovely girl. And <laughs> she was having a baby. So they got another girl called Jilly Robick, who's a puppeteer as well, to take over from Valerie while she had a baby. And that, that's fine. And then it was a year or two later, Valerie was having another baby. So they approached Jilly to say, oh, do you want to come and do another series? And she couldn't. Yeah. So then, you know, it was like, well, Ronnie, do you know anybody? And, and so my name came up. Um, and so I went in to, to operate George for a series. And fortunately for me, I suppose, Valerie decided she, she wanted to just stay at home and be a, be a lovely mum. Yeah. And so, so didn't, didn't come back. Um, so the years went by and every time I think, oh, Valerie might want to come back. Valerie might want to come back. Um, but I, I did it for, I think, 12 years altogether, wow. Rainbow. Um, so thank you, Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as I say, then um, took over um, playing Bungle, who's also here. I've got his his little, he might just wander in here. There he is. Look at him oh, there. Wow. Um, it's quite That's a big the, head. It's it's in very good condition. Oh, wow. oh, oh, hello! My name's Bungle. Um, well, he's a bit, he's a bit tatty. Yeah. Um, he's a bit worn, uh, and of course, when you when you work in the um, TV, the, the the puppets and things are, are all very well cared for, yeah. and they have new ones made every now and again. The real struggle is is when you go to do theatre. Yeah. And that's that's why my George and Zippy are so. Um, I've got Zippy here as well. Uh, that's why my Zippy, <laughs> they all look the same. Um, that's why these are very worn because they've done pantos, hundreds of shows. Um, so they, they, they've had a hard life. <laughs> um, and I, I keep sort of thinking, oh, shall I get them recovered or whatever? And you think, well, no, because then they wouldn't be the same really, would they? Um, maybe have a new set made like Ronnie's had a new set. Yeah. So. We'll see. Yeah, and with with doing George and then moving on to Bungle, do you reckon that puppeteer knowledge helped with Bungle to make it all easier because you knew what you were doing sort of more? Well, yes. I mean, I knew I knew Bungle's character, um, but also I hadn't I hadn't worked inside a whole musk before, and you suddenly realise that you know a you can't see where you're going a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, B, you, you get quite warm and C, it's no good if, you know, if um, someone says, oh, Bungle, you look sad. It's no good standing there going, because it's it doesn't show because so you, you've got to sort of make everything much bigger and yeah. bolder. Otherwise, you can't. It's a bit like puppeteering as well. You can't just go. It doesn't mean anything. it's got to be big and bold and um, to, to make it register. Mm. Do you reckon being bungles like real like harder because when you when when you see more like full body puppets it seems harder and and do you reckon do you reckon bungles like um a ha harder harder to to perform all the time because like with a normal puppet you you're on the floor and and it might and it might cramp a little bit but with bungle it would be a lot hotter is it a lot harder? Well, yes, it, it, it breaks. Uh, uh, also, it's um, with Rainbow um, mm. because we were working to, to Roy Skelton's voice. We didn't have to learn it. We didn't have to learn the lines. You'd, you'd know, you know, what Roy was going to say or whatever. You, but you didn't have to learn them. Mm. Um, whereas doing Bungle, you had to learn it because you can't you can't have the script pinned up under the desk. Mm. You know, you, uh, and even if you had a script, you couldn't see it through the head anyway. Um, so that was always quite tricky in that because the way the way we did the TV show, yeah. um, the week would start on a Friday, and on Friday morning we'd we'd have a what they call a read through, and we'd read three three episodes, and they would time them because the programme had to last something like 14 minutes and 45 seconds. Mm. Uh, else otherwise, you couldn't suddenly have a rainbow that lasted 20 minutes. 
because you know you'd be into the next program or one that was only 10 minutes um so we'd read those through and then we would what you call block them so the director would then say right so bungle you'll come through the door you go and stand to the left of jeffrey and then the, you do this and do that and you write all that in your book and then over the weekend jeffrey and myself uh, had to learn it yeah because then we'd come back monday morning to rehearse and you know you had to be, get rid of your script so we then do some rehearsal on on the monday yeah. and then again on the tuesday and at about you know 12 o'clock on a tuesday the the producers and uh, pas would would come to the rehearsal room and we would then basically perform it um bungle just just as me uh george and zippy there uh and again it would be timed mm -hmm. and oh you know it's oh it's a minute too long oh we um cut that lines and shapes or cut that bit of dialogue bungle uh or if it was short they say, say something else you know so it was all a bit last minute um and then on wednesday and thursday we'd be in the studio and actually record the three episodes plus rod jane and freddie's yeah. songs as well um and then the week then we'd go back on friday morning again yeah um so doing that for sort of our, we used to work sort of three months on three months off so by a, about week nine or ten, you know, you're going, oh, <laughs> it's a bit like a mouse on a wheel. And then you're thinking, if I have to sing the wheels onto the bus go round and round once more. <laughs> but uh, it, it was always good fun, though. We, we always had a, a good time. Yeah. And, and you didn't only just end up playing Bungle on Rainbow. What I reckon one of the non, one of the best moments um, I, I reckon because it, it's, it's brilliant. How did you end up playing Bungle in two pints of lager in a packet of crisps? Oh, right. <laughs> well, again, um, the, whoever wrote that episode um, sort of did it as a bit of a joke that uh, I can't remember all the characters' names. Johnny, was it? Yeah. He'd, uh, he'd promised his girlfriend that um, if he won the lottery, he'd. he'd uh, marry her you know get buy her an engagement ring and all this sort of stuff and so it was rumored he'd won the lottery so she was really really excited but he'd only won about a hundred pounds or something um and so to surprise her he hired a bouncy castle and bo and bungle came free with it um so they, they just rang and said look we've got this episode would, would you be able to come up and uh and do it and uh, it was good fun i remember bouncing up and down on the yeah. on that castle bounce me johnny bounce me <laughs> I remember that but it was really just a little bit and a little bit at the end of the credits um but they showed that they showed that a lot of times mm. because I, I don't know whether you know with, with television um you, you get you get paid your fee but if yeah. they show it again they have to pay you a certain amount of money um not not your full amount of money again, um, but you know a repeat fee. Um, and for years, little bits of money kept coming in, two pints of lager money. Um, yes, that was one of them. And uh, most we also did. I Bungle also did um, Keith Lemon, Keith Lemon and Paddy moving picture show as a replacement for Chewbacca or something. I can't. <laughs> um, and also. The actor John Thompson, mm. Brian Conley had a series where he was he'd interview a celebrity, and uh, I don't know whether you saw that. Yeah. I can't remember what it was called. And apparently, John Thompson, the actor from Cold Feet, yeah. as a small boy, uh, was terrified of Bungle. So they thought it would be funny if, while he's being interviewed, I would come on. Um, and he had no idea. He, I, I can't. Is it called? Uh, those were the years I can't remember. It's, it's when they talk about things they liked yeah. on TV and stuff. I'm sure it'll be on YouTube somewhere. Was it Telly Heaven, Telly Hell? Um, no, it wasn't that. It was uh, I remember um, that knocking about something about years. But if, if you Google it, I'm sure you'll find it. Um, and uh, it was one of those things, you know, you, Brian Connell is saying to you, oh, you know, so, you know, was a kid, what was your face? Oh, I like Rainbow, he said. 
He said, but that bungle, oh. He said, I remember once my mum came in and I said, I said to her, mum, bungle must die. <laughs> and so then Brian Connolly said, well, John, we've got a little surprise for you. You haven't seen him for, and on I came, but that was, that. All, I can't think of all those years of TV or something. I can't remember. Um, but yes, there was all these, and Jim Davidson, the, the comedian Jim Davidson was a great fan of Bungle George and Zippy. So we went on his show quite yeah. a few times um, and various chat shows and quiz shows. Uh, Ron has done quite a few with Zippy yeah. as well. The week um, the week. But when you, when you consider that uh, next year it's 50 years wow. that Rainbow first aired, October 1972, mm -hmm. and people like you and never still talk about it. Yeah, it, it's um, really bonkers. Uh, Fifty years. Yeah. I don't. I, whether they'd ever remake it, I don't. I don't think they would now. But no, I. I, I don't think that's on the cards for, for no. remakes because they've got. Because I. I. I reckon that they, they leave leave it where it is because if they remade that, that would upset a lot of people. Whereas in like remaking other shows like Wurzel Gummidge and that mm. it upset a majority of people <clears throat> like me. But it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't like cause like a massive outrage because like certain people aren't, aren't around anymore and it wouldn't wouldn't have the same feel like art attack now now mm. disney own it doesn't feel the same as it no when you'll be no oh, no i mean I, I suppose i'm the same when I, the things i used to watch as a child the wooden tops and mm -hmm. andy pandy and all that they they mean something different to you you look at them now and you go crikey how could i have ever wanted to watch that uh, as a child because it's so basic and primitive some of it um but at the time it, you absolutely loved it and, it and it's it's part of your childhood and and it should stay protected in a way mm. i mean I, I i would imagine if they just suddenly decided to show a load of rainbows on tv i think today's kids would still enjoy it yeah well i, I mean look at you you're how old um 17 17 you know i mean rainbow was last on tv before you were born yeah, wasn't well it yeah, well, I really, it's like really weird because CITV, oh, ITV on the right to Rainbow, but it used to be on Nick Jr. when I was yes. really small. It was on, for no apparent reason, just like, so was, so was Bagpuss. So uh -huh. like, everything just like collided, but it's, but it's so popular. But for me, I, I'm, I'm a little bit different to normal people my age. People sometimes say I'm 80 on the inside. <laughs> I know more about TV in general from past, future, and present more than I know what, any like modern slang. I don't know any of it. I'm right. I'm like I, I'm always back in time in some yeah. forwards, and it's and it's always really interesting. But but Rainbow's one of those programs that you no matter what age you are, no matter what generation it is, you can always watch it and enjoy it. And that's the good thing about YouTube. YouTube. Mm. Um, DVDs, it's not really much on DVDs, but you can still buy the VHSs of it. But YouTube keeps a legacy, so more fans oh, yes. are coming to see it and more fans are, are coming to find this beautiful... But what, what, what are the... I don't know what the legal things are with YouTube. Do, do the owners sometimes take programmes down? Yeah, or... so, so right. cop, copyright's an, an issue that, that I've faced in my time as well, and a, and a lot of YouTubers do, but a lot of, like old program the now is only being taken down but there's a channel called flashback tv that i think officially keep all run it because the official um, rainbow facebook page like right. plays links from that so I, I i don't know whether it's anything to it but do you own the rights to bungle or is that no else? no the, the the characters are all uh copyrighted mm. um and i mean if for, for instance if they said all right we're going to bring rainbow back they, they have no obligation to use me whatsoever. Yeah. Um, they, they could cast who they like. Um, so we don't, I've got, I own the costume that, that was given to me. So um, the same as the puppets. Yeah. Um, Cause the way that the puppets used to work was that um, maybe we'd have a new set of puppets every two couple of series. Yeah. So we'd have what were called the transmission set, yeah. which were the, the new, ones and, and they were kept in this special trunk and then we had a, a, a 
TV studio rehearsal set, yeah. which were would have been the previous best ones, yeah. if you know what I mean, uh, to rehearse with uh, in the studio. And then when it came to the take, we, we'd get the, the best best yeah. out and use those. Um, and then, of course, two series on, they'd make another best set. So that set would become the rehearsal set. And then the rehearsal set was like, well, who wants these then? Yeah. You know, so eventually I think Ronnie had a set, I had a set, Roy had a set and Jeffrey had a set. Yeah. Um, because otherwise things things like that used to, used to go in what they called the crusher because television studios can't keep everything. Mm. They, they would just go into this machine that just gobbled and squashed everything up. Sets, you know, it wow. would all just disappear because mm. um, it was... I suppose sometimes cheaper to make it again than it would be to store it all. Yeah. So they they've been rescued, bless them. <laughs> they've been rescued. Like you pride and joy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now, as you said earlier, it's coming up to, to 50 years, and Sesame Street had its 50 years not so long ago. Mm-hmm. Would you would you come back to to so like sometimes they do like programs where they have like presenters with like celebrity fans of the show? Would you ever would you want to come back? to to reprise your role just uh, like as, as a joke for a 50th anniversary oh um, yes I'd, I'd be quite happy if you know someone said oh let's let's all get together and do something uh yeah no no problem at all yeah. um it's just that bungle is a little bit scruffy now they Fremantle, who own the rights um they have met they did make a new bungle which i've i've worn i think i wore it on that um brian Connolly and john thompson thing um and it's, it's not bad, but I'm, I, I, I do love my bungle. <laughs> he's lovely. Yeah. Um, he's been through the mill, bless him. I mean, oh, crikey, there was a time. Have you got time for a, a story? Yeah. I have. Um, it's when we were touring mm. uh, and we were at uh, a theatre called Liverpool, the Liverpool Empire, which is a huge, big theatre in Liverpool, obviously. <laughs> and um, in the theatre, you have... Uh, before the show, you you have what's called the half hour call, then you have a fifteen minute call, and then and then a five minute call, and then what they call beginners. And beginners is sort of five minutes before curtain up, so you've then got five minutes to get down to the stage and and be ready. Because often, if you ever go and see a theatre show, you're looking at all these curtains, and little do you know that you know there's probably six of the actors all standing there behind the curtains waiting uh, and can hear the audience. So <laughs> never say anything bad about somebody who's in a play because they might hear you. Um, <laughs> anyway, I was in the dressing room and I suddenly felt terribly ill. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to be sick. I can't, but, and I was, I was terribly sick, food poisoning. Mm. And I thought, I can't do it. I can't possibly put that bungle head on. I can't do it. Um, so I called the company manager and I said, I don't think I can go on. I'm, I feel so ill. And she said, well, well you've got to. There's no understudies. Um, I, th- I think they had a girl that sort of did wardrobe and merchandise that would have to do it if, in an emergency. Uh, she said, once you get on stage, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So anyway, I did it, did the first scene. And then I came off and I was just so sick in the wings. Oh. Uh, everywhere it was awful awful and there's and there's no way I could carry on and this poor girl they had to they got me out of bungle and put her in it <laughs> after I've just been sick <laughs> it's vile isn't it this story yeah. um, and uh, she had to go on but of course she didn't know any of the words or anything so I stayed in the wings and did the voice from the wings with a microphone um, so I'm sort of going, oh, hello, Zippy. <laughs> and this poor girl was on stage doing it. But oh, but the thing was, poor girl, she, she didn't know where to go, where to stand. So I was having to sort of say like, oh, I think I'll just look through the window, you know, so that she'd go and be in the right place. And oh, that was a nightmare, oh, nightmare. Yeah. So, yes, these these poor characters, they have <laughs> they've been through the mill. Yeah. And. <laughs> And if you were, to, uh, my idea for uh, for a 50th anniversary special, which I will, I'm going to air out now, just in case anyone from ITV are watching. Mm-hmm. Probably mm-hmm. not. 
But, um, <laughs> but what, it, what what could be really funny is that how, if you do like one of those, they did it for the 30th anniversary where they had like celebrities talk about why they loved the show and then clips and here and mm-hmm. there and presenter. And it'd be really funny if they bring the characters on just saying what they've been doing for the last 50 years. And well, yes. Like Rainbow, and it'd be rather funny to see some character development in a in a funny sense. Well, yes. You mean you mean what the, what what bungled George as if you've been up to yeah. as, as them, not yeah. not as us. No, no. Where where, um, where have they yeah, gone? Where have they been? Yeah. And um, what they ended up doing? Yes, yeah. that would be fun. Right. Because fans um uh, for years have been like doing like t- like using the building their own puppets and using them. So there was like uh, a Mickey take of Top Gear where. Where, That's right. Yes. Where Bungle and Zip, no, it was George, Zippy and George were on it, but it was like more for like a grown-up audience because the. Yes, it, it was a. Words. It was a little bit rude, wasn't it? If I yeah. remember right, there's there's been yeah. a few of those, mm. and it's a bit like the famous one that always does the rounds. Yeah. Uh, you know about the well, you've seen it, I'm sure. The, yeah. the and everyone say, oh, this. How did this ever go out? Um, I don't. I don't know whether you know the true story about that. Um, um, no. The sketch. Do tell. What, what that happened there. You know the one I mean? Yeah, I do know the one you mean. Um, I'm not saying any of it <laughs> for legal reasons, but people will find it. Just Google rude rainbow or something. Um, and how that came about, it, it was never made as a proper programme. Yeah. Um, every year, the, the ITV regions... So you, you've got Thames, uh, Central, Granada, Yorkshire, all those sort of things. Um, we, we'd have a big get together, a big sort of garden party. Um, and there was this thing where each region would submit perhaps a little spoof, or certainly this year, a spoof of one of their programmes. Mm. So you might have got, you know, a funny little bit from Coronation Street or a bit from Emmerdale or The Bill or whatever. And so Thames decided we'd do this little spoof of Rainbow where it was just full of double meaning, really. A, a, a three-year-old, four-year-old would sit and watch it and not think there was anything wrong with it. Yeah. But, but, but there was a lot of double meaning. Um, and so it was only ever done as a private little video, really. Yeah. Um, and we, we won the prize for being, for being the funniest, the best. And that was it. That was it. And then suddenly, like 10 years later, it, it, it appeared. And it was like, well, where did that come from? Um, but it was, it was all done innocently. <laughs> as well. Yeah. And, but that, that always comes up. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing that really confused me as well. Like, I don't know how these people are getting hold of these. Like, it's like a lot of like US remakes and programs that never aired. People mm-hmm. just randomly get in on YouTube and it and it's really really quite quite odd um and so what's so your so what's your like favorite memory of like the the rainbow fans today what, what what's, what's what's my favorite rainbow memory yeah um oh crikey I mean I think um getting the job anyway uh because it was my first television thing um and I, I was absolutely thrilled um and it and it meant i had quite a good pay rise as well from working in the theater because uh, it paid better um but i always um and i think seeing my name on the credits for the yeah. first time it was like oh that's me <laughs> you know um and that sort of thrill never really left me as Whenever we'd, you know, walk into the studio, I always got this thing, oh, I'm in a television studio, this is wonderful. Yeah. Um, but as for, and again, what I'll remember is, is the laughter because we, we laughed such a lot. Um, there was never any really falling out or anything like that. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and people often ask me what my favorite episode is and there's so many you forget them um mm. but i'm i'm quite proud of um super bungle yeah i think i think that's that's a good one that was quite uncomfortable because i was basically sewn into that Ooh. suit <laughs> you know it was like 
and it, it, you couldn't really to take it off you'd have to take everything off do you know what i mean so oh, um right. i i stayed in it for a long long time yeah. um and there was a lovely um my i think one of my favorite george moments here he is was when um you probably may know the program more than me there was something about Jeffrey was selling the Rainbow House. I don't know whether you remember, ever saw that one. It may not be one that's seen. And we were packing up. We were going to move from the Rainbow House to somewhere else. And George didn't want to go. <laughs> he, he really didn't want to go. And they left him on his own for a while. And the telephone rang. And it was the estate agent or something. <laughs> and George answered it. And he, he sort of looked around and, and he goes, no. This house is not for sale. <laughs> and hung up. And so, I just remember he was so proud of himself. But, but lovely, lovely memories. Lovely yes. memories. Well, well, that's what um, a lot, a lot of kids, a lot of kids don't like moving and, and seeing, seeing, well, yeah. seeing bungling that would resonate with them. Well, I think, I mean, that was the whole thing with um, Rainbow. It wasn't just, hit, hit, you know, here's a funny program. Just sit and watch it. There, there was usually um, a message that, that that not everyone would pick up on, but as you say, if a child was nervous or worried about moving, um, they might think, oh, well, maybe it won't be so bad. I don't know. Yeah. A lot of issues were covered uh, as well, really. Yeah. And and um, one one of my um, one of my favourite episodes of Rainbow. I don't I don't know if you were around uh, at that time, but. Were, were you did, did you were you there when the did the sort of crossover with uh, Sutty? Um, well, Sutty, Sutty, Sutty came did, into the program. Yeah, yeah, they did like a crossover where where it, where it was from it was on the Sutty Sutty show when they were getting ready to come over. That's that's yes. Wasn't this was was it all for Bungle's birthday or something? Was it? Uh, I, I, th I think it was because it was. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. I think it was someone's birthday. Yeah, I think, I think it was gonna. Yeah, I think I was bungled for that one. I'm trying to think. Um, and there was this special guest coming. Yeah, and yeah. all that, and it and it was Sooty. Yeah. It was Sooty who came. Mm. Um, I don't know. Had, Je had Jeffrey arranged it in secret or something? He, he must. He must. Have. Yeah, Cause... I think it was something like Bungle's birthday surprise or something. Yeah, but. Um, it's just one of the best episodes because you you see two two well known franchises yes. together for something you would never expect to happen. Like you see crossovers quite quite a lot usually, but you never expected Bumble mm. and and the Rainbow Gang in the same sooty. universe. Sooty. A sooty. Yeah. Ah, but but you, there is a, is a link there. I'm sure. Yeah. Do you know that? Because With Matthew, Freddie, Roger and Freddie used. To, oh yeah, because Matthew was part. Of, it, Okay. It used to be it used to be Rod Jane and Matthew. That's it. And then um, Matthew went on to do Sooty because his dad retired from it all. Mm. Uh, and then it was Rod Jane and Roger. Yeah. Um, and then Rod Jane and Freddie. Um, and F Freddie and I joined at, in the same year. Mm. Um, so we were we were both new boys together. Um, I've got no. There's there's quite a few. One of my other favourite ones uh, as Bungle was um, when he was trying to learn to play the piano. Yeah. Um, and he, he was dreadful, basically. <laughs> uh, but he, he dreamt of being this wonderful concert pianist. And um, he was bashing away, making a terrible noise. And Jeffrey got a piano teacher to come in. And uh, George and Zippy were upstairs. And of course, she sat to show him the piano and played. And Zippy was upstairs thinking it was Bungle playing it. And he go, what? I can't believe it. And, all this. and of course, when they came down, they realised it was this, this other lady. Good, good, good fun. Good fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, now uh, an interesting question. What's your favourite piece of rainbow merchandise? Oh, crikey. Um, I suppose it, it would be, the thing is, we didn't get an awful lot of it, or often I'd, I'd get, because there was like a little Thames shop, you'd get things, but it was to give away, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I've got very little myself, but I have got um, 
a small uh, Georgian zippy and a, and a bongle. You, if you press his tummy, he speaks. Uh, and of course, it was me going, oh, let's play a game, everybody. Uh, and I, I've, I've broken it. I've pressed it so often. <laughs> he doesn't work anymore. Um, but they're lovely. But I used to, I used to like the annuals as well. Yeah. Well, um, Ronnie, Ronnie had one of those. When, yeah. When you see me, he showed me an early one where where Bungung looks a little bit more. Oh, very scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, torn him down. Um, yes, he was a bit. Uh, yeah. Um, yes, we that we were always given an annual. Oh, well, mm. we didn't have to pay for it. We got given an annual. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but sometimes now as well, you think, crikey. If, if we kept more of that stuff, we'd be able to retire, wouldn't we, and sell it all? Because um, yeah. it's things like the scripts. Wow. You, you used to just bin them because I think, cool. Ronnie, I think mm -hmm. Ronnie kept some for a time. But after a right. while, you get... Because you'd have a your, your rehearsal script and then, then you'd have a, a camera script for on the day. Yeah. With it all, you know, and it would be all marked in there that... that you know, you're on a close-up on camera four for that shot and blah, blah, blah. Um, and of course you just have all these things and, and by the end of 10, 12 weeks, you know, there'd be pile like this. Yeah. Um, and so you end up cutting them up for scrap paper and things. And oh, then, now you think, oh, if only we kept them. Yeah, because a lot of like, um, a lot of people now, um, me included, uh, uh, like, love looking at scripts and that. So you, mm. you, you see like, it's, it's almost becoming a new thing that everyone wants to because a lot of script writers, especially me included, love the idea of looking for a script and knowing that this is, this is what a, a professional script looks like. And these, well, yes. these are the points you have to have in, you have to have like your, where your camera movement is and, mm. and where, where your character, where your actors, you, you need your actors to stand in it. And, and then stuff like that costs millions. So, well, yes. For me, I'm a massive Doctor Who fan. And and so what what I do with a lot of my Doctor Who stuff, I sort of like if if like if it's something like figures now, I keep holding them in a box because mm. you know in ten to fifteen years time and no one can get hold of them, they'll That's be worth right. millions. Yes, right, you'll be all right. But also, you see, with things like a script, uh, we would write in them. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, you know when I said about blocking, you know, and so there I would have written in it, you know, enter through door, move to left of table. And all those sort of things would be quite fascinating to look at now. Mm. That the the actual actor had had written their notes uh, in there, or you know, say this bit louder, or do that bit. Or, you know, yeah. that would make it more interesting as well. But sadly, no, they all went in the bin. You could have opened up a rainbow museum. <laughs> yes, I, I've still got my rainbow badge somewhere yeah. upstairs. Um, and now, now a, a question more on the. More in the side, you, you might not know the answer to this, but um, we'll, we'll see. Um, ha, is Bungle made like um, like you see a Disneyland, like um, a Mickey Mouse of Disneyland, or is he made more more like um, like a Big Bird, like more like a more for for the the puppy, or more for like a um, like a mascot costume run around? Um, I, well, it, you mean what the, the padding and all that sort yeah. of stuff? Yeah. Well, Bungle's padding, I, I should have brought it down with me. I haven't. Um, I, I wear underneath. Um, it was made out of, you know, like a, a ballet tutu. Yeah. That very stiff net. Yeah. And it's basically like a, like a, an all in one suit. Yeah. That's white, frilly, and it's, it's big, and mm -hmm. the legs and, and the body. And then the, the fur suit goes over the top. Um, and then the hands, feet, and head are, are separate. Um, but that's how he's padded out. But over the years, that has sort of gone yeah. a bit limp and soft. <laughs> so he, he doesn't, he isn't as quite as um, big bellied as he used yeah. to be. He's gone, he's gone a bit soft inside. Mm. Um, but I mean, it's that thing of, of even now, um, out of a, uh, it, side situation I would never let me see like bungle with no head on do you know what I mean yeah if I if I get ready I, no one will see me until I'm fully dressed mm -hmm. uh, and I would never then sort of just take the head off 
um, in, in front of people. Yeah, and then walk um, around with him and you show with him, head yeah. held underneath your. Yeah. Actually, that was quite that was quite funny once. Um, talking about merchandise, um, I think a company were making T-shirts and all this yeah. sort of stuff. And there was a trade fair at the Excel Centre in London, big, big, big place. And um, they said, could Bungle come and be on the stand to, you know, to draw a bit of attention and, and all this sort of stuff. So I said, yes, yes, I'll go. Um, but obviously I'll need somewhere to change and whatever, whatever. So I arrived. There's me, this, this little old man with a suitcase with Bungle in. And I got to the stand and I said, oh, yes, I need to. Oh, they hadn't got anywhere. So I thought, well, I can't I can't just there's people walking and I can't just get changed here. Um, so I ended up having to go into the public loos. Mm. So <laughs> anybody watching saw this little old man <laughs> disappearing into the toilets with the suitcase. And then about 10 minutes later, <laughs> Bungle walked out carrying the suitcase <laughs> with my clothes inside it. That would just be freaking people out. You might be for mad. So, that's right. My goodness me. Um, and that we had a lot of fun that day because I remember uh, we we did the old gag with... Um, I, I just stood on the, perfectly still without moving and the people on the stand would say, oh, do you, do you remember? Well, look, we, we've got the original bungle outfit here. And, of course, I just wouldn't move. And then they'd walk up and I'd go, hello! <laughs> and they'd jump out of their skin. Um, so even, even a little thing like that can be fun as well. But, yes, that, I just thought if that was ever on CCTV, of this <laughs> little man walking into a public toilet. Oh, that'd be worth it. And then Bungle walking out <laughs> with the dead man inside. <laughs> If if you like if like Superman walking walking into a phone box and then walking back out and he's yes. yes. to be ready to save the day, which, which <laughs> is always which has always confused me because I don't, I don't think uh, as as a superhero you, you're very well disguised if you all you have to do is take off your glasses and then you that's right out. and put your pants on the outside of your trousers. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, but if if Rainbow ever if if they ever re-ran ran Rainbow so much on, pro- probably uh, the way everything's going, they'll probably end up rerunning on the BBC at this rate because mm-hmm. a lot of IT, TITV classics are now, when they get rebooted, they move to the BBC. Well, but, if, yes. but if Rainbow ever rerun, do you reckon you, you would ever see like um, pop-up shops coming up, like Singing Kettle, um, when they used to their live show, they had the, the big dog that I can never remember his name. They had like a a rainbow, uh, not a rainbow, a singing kettle shop. Would you reckon right. a rainbow shop would ever happen if it became so popular all, all over again? Well, I don't see why not. And I mean, also, I suppose the thing is, because rainbow's called rainbow, the, the, um, the rainbow itself is used a lot, isn't it? You could actually have a whole shop dedicated to rainbow and rainbows, couldn't you? Yeah. Um, all sorts of things. Yeah. Because um, singing, singing kettle... Was was well, I don't think Singing Kettle was ever as popular as Rainbow or, or on a standpoint. So no. I always thought that Rainbow should have had a shop more than because the Singing Kettle shop was just oh, yeah. like a red. And you used to watch it at the end of the DVDs and see mm. a dog just walk into it. And mm. Not much there, but it would it would bring out it's like like it, it's like in in charity shops now people go in it and see like a Rainbow DVD on that. And do you reckon? Well, yeah. They'll ever release Rainbow on Blu-ray. Do you reckon that'll ever happen? Oh, crikey. Oh, that would be something, wouldn't it? (laughs) I suppose... Well, I don't know technically enough how... um, I mean, the the quality of the filming at the time... I mean, obviously, now you've got 4G and and, and HD, is it? HDR and all that? 4K, HD, Um, 12K. I don't know whether it would improve the quality of it i don't know would it is a, well well can, can you blu-ray something that that was quite old yeah well a lot of a lot of stuff are doing that so at the moment in in july we've got so like pug wash and then mm-hmm. are all coming to brit box which is uh bbc itv channel 5 channel 4 comedy central uk 
um, film for, and that's that they bring you more classic shows because ITV own it more than the BBC, mm-hmm. um, and so ITV have added all, all these all these shows like Banana Man and all them, and and they right. look they look really really good. So I think Rainbow deserves to be on a streaming service. So one right. fans can watch it, and two. You, you could just get more rich because more people watching it. You'll get more money in your bank. <laughs> you get more fans. Well, you never know. They'd have to pay. Well, I suppose they'd have to pay us something, yeah. um, because that was again a, a lot of things now. A lot of TV that's made now, um, it's what what they call a buyout. Yeah. So it's like you know, well, we'll pay you this now, but that includes all rights and and everything. So, you know. If, Say if they'd have paid you a hundred pounds, they'll say, "Well, we'll pay you two hundred pounds, but that's it. You you'll never get another penny." Uh, was Rainbow was never like that. It was always you know whatever. So if they do show it again, um, yeah, we but... get we'd get something, but yeah. um, a, a fraction of what you'd have got. Mm. But yeah, it would still be nice. Yeah, I don't mind. I'll I'll accept money from anyone. Yeah. Um, but also, as, as you said about yeah. ITV and BBC, when when I was working there, I'm not saying the ITV and BBC were enemies. Um, You're having a little bit of a war. But, but you you wouldn't have, have um, crossed over like that. It was, yeah. um, you know, I remember once or twice you'd say, you know, you the producers might approach someone to come and read a story or something on Rainbow, and they'd say, oh no 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 no, they're BBC. You know, they yeah. sort of they someone who worked for the BBC. Like you say, you wouldn't necessarily get say, one of the Blue Peter presenters yeah. that would come on and read a story on Rainbow. Because yeah. it would be like, ooh, yeah. ooh wrong side. Because even, can you imagine in my day as well, when the, the TV listing magazines, you had the TV Times, which was ITV programmes, and the Radio Times, which is the BBC. So you had to buy two different TV papers yeah. to see what was on telly. Um, they didn't work together even on that. Mm. It was all very separate. Yeah, and and now and now you see so danger. So the two big ones that I can uh, put my finger on right at the get go is Danger Mouse and Worst Witcher have uh, moved over from ITV to BBC, not to do reruns, of which because ITV would still own the right to to any all mm. the they really reboot them. And and I, and I feel like so a lot of shows now, um, pretty much a few weeks ago, they they did a on BBC Four they did a children's classic children's night where the air uh-huh. classic boy peter bag bus and put the whole of bag bus on there i the engine and then documentaries on them and i and i feel like the itv hub needs like just mm. something like that so a lot of well, well. shows when i was uh in in like older end and it's like the my shows are all like now putting on their rerunning and i reckon itv need to do that because CITV is now just loaded with American programs or Disney programs oh. or Nickelodeon programs and they need the break. And, lo- and a lot of cartoons and animation. Yeah. 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 And, yeah, and nice. you reckon you would you would sit and watch yourself back on Rainbow if it was ever on TV again? Yes, I would. I mean, I would now. I'd watch more now if I, if I had the time because, as I say, and, and often because because we did so many episodes... Mm. Crikey, I'm, I can't remember how many in total. I know we did the thousandth and we did quite a few more after that. Um, so there's probably, I don't know, 1,200 yeah. rainbow episodes. Mm. And sometimes you, I'm watching it and I'm thinking, I have no recollection of this programme at all. Yeah. And you're thinking, are you sure that's me? And then you watch, you go, yeah, yeah. And you <laughs> think, I cannot remember it at all. Um and then others, you go just within it. You go, oh right, I remember that one. Yeah. Um, whether it be a, me as George or or, or as Bungle, mm. um, and of course uh, myself, well, and Ronnie, we both did a few times. Would appear as human beings. I don't know whether you've ever spotted us. I don't know. Ah, oh, oh, there, there's a challenge for you. Um, quite often in, I, I did quite a few. Um, like when Ralph, Jane and Freddie were doing a song, sometimes they might need, there's one for instance, where the, the program was about books yeah. and they were singing about books and it was set in a library and they were bringing the book and I was the librarian as me, <laughs> as Malcolm. Um, 
and there's a, there's another episode where you've got, I think it's called the hare and the tortoise. Mm. Whether you've ever caught that one, um, and it's the story of the hare and the tortoise, but Zippy and George are acting it out, yeah. and Zippy is surrounded by all these reporters. Yeah, you go. What did you think? You know all this, and of course that's me, Ronnie, uh, Stanley, uh, and Roy. So if you find these episodes and you look, you'll you'll often spot us as sort of extras, yeah. um, human beings and things like that. Yeah. Um, there was one on robots I did, and I, I was a customer in a robot cafe mm. with CP3O and RD2, whatever whatever they're called. Um, I wouldn't know. So there, there's a challenge for you. Yeah. See if you can find something with me and Ronnie in. Uh, and now, 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 um, as as we wrap up this amazing interview, uh, a, a few more questions to go. Um, how did your parents um feel about this when when they first, when you first uh, first appeared in Rim? Were you were your parents supportive? Did they <laughs> did they sit down and watch you? Well, yes. I mean, they I think they were very pleased for me, uh, and that, that I was earning you know um better money. But my mum. <laughs> My mum was quite funny in that, um, uh, you know how they always have about TV ratings? Yeah. She had this idea in her head that if she had the telly on, she'd click up as, an, as a viewer. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. more people were watching. And she actually said once, oh, she'd know, I always put Rainbow on. I don't watch it, but I always put it on <laughs> to put the ratings up. So I always had this vision of her going, oh, it's 10 past 12. Putting the tent and then going away and doing the hoovering, but never actually watching the program. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the theme, the theme tune. Um, we'll go on to that. So the theme tune. There's another part of um TV that that, that really just is amazing uh, as well as the program themselves. Um, do you, do you if if Rainbow's ever mentioned in a song or or like like Matt Berry did his own iteration of the Rainbow theme tune? Do mm -hmm. you get any money? Like any money in reference in Rainbow? Or no, no, not at all. Um, and the, the people who actually wrote that theme tune were the, the original mm. group, which was called Telltale. Um, they wrote the theme tune. And, and even when, you know, Rod, Jane and Matthew, whatever, it was the same theme tune was kept. Yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming that, because that, music copyright is usually a lot tougher than, than other yeah. things, that um but again maybe maybe they sold the rights to it i don't know but um no we we get not we were purely um actors yeah puppeteers yeah. that that were employed mm -hmm. um so have none none of the cop i mean th thinking about it when um when thames lost its franchise yeah and was no more that would have been the time and if only we'd thought about it we could have said, oh, you know, well, could we buy the rights to it or something? Yeah. Um, and they'd have probably let us have it for next to nothing. Yeah. Um, it's not in use. And, and we would now own the rights still. Yeah. And uh, because Fre Fremantle ended up with the rights, but that's because they, they acquired Thames Television at some point mm. um, and the back catalogue. So Fremantle yeah. owned the rights, but um had nothing to do with it really yeah and i don't think that they they don't do anything with the characters anymore do they i haven't seen anything for a long long time um oh. and haven't been asked to do anything well as i say, the last thing i did there was the brian Connolly thing and the keith um lemon and paddy picture show um so if somebody wants to do something it has to go yeah. through them um but I, 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 I don't think they're actually pushing anything at the moment yeah. or, or pushing any merchandise. But whether they'll do something for the, when it's the 50th as a, as a hook, yeah. um, well, you, who you knows? Never know. You never know because um, the Mr. Men recently um, did, had an anniversary and Channel, mm. 4, Channel 4 did something, something for them. And so I, I, re I reckon it, it's a matter of waiting by the phone you might get a phone call. oh yes might get a call hello, so, hello. are you still alive <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You yeah. see, the, the thing is about Rainbow as well is, is the fact that it was on continuously. And when I say continuously, yeah. every week yeah. for over 20 years. Yeah. I mean, some soap operas don't run that long. Uh, I, um, I mean, um, Sooty is, is, is one of the oldest ones, but, but Sooty wasn't on every week. Yeah. Uh, whereas Rainbow was on once, twice, three times, sometimes, mm. every week from this October 72 uh, to uh, December 93. Yeah. And then and 21 then... years, every week Rainbow wow. was on. Yeah. And yeah, and Sotty has been going for. Been... It's, it's been going longer, but it's not, it's not continuous. Yeah. But, but with, with, Ray, with the Rainbow and Sotty, there's a lot of like crossovers with it, with Roger and Freddie. Being, being the ones that they appeared for so one of Sutty's, I think Sutty's 30th birthday. Yeah. Right, yes. And they sang, and they sang the uh, the famous song that ev every time I'm sat anywhere, it just pops in my head and gets stuck in my head for the next <laughs> four weeks. And it, oh, and it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and no, now, no, now just... to my final, my final question. Uh, well, who who do you make the check payable to? Is that the last <laughs> question? <laughs> um, my final question is is a question that uh, a lot of people would would want to know. Um, is how how do you do you move um, Bungle's mouth? Do you do it with your own mouth, or do you have to get your hand in there? To yes. Do, do Do you want me to show it you? Yes, please. I, I, I don't want, I don't want to spoil it for for. But if I turn this that way, hang on a second. There we go. You can see if I can get the light in there. Um, that's the lower jaw. Yeah. And that's that's on elastic. Oops. Mm. And so, and then that goes in there. So as I go like that, the mouth works. I'll I'll hang on. I'll put it on. That'd be easier. Yeah. It's, so yeah. head on. My my chin is now there. Yeah. So I just get it in the right position. So as I talk, it moves up and down like that. Yeah. Hello, how are you? Hmm. So, and it's just then like um, puppeteering in that um, with George that it's basically um, open on vowel sounds, closed on consonants. Yeah. Hello. Whereas a lot of people just go, they just go, it means nothing. But yeah. to do it properly, you have to lip sync so that it looks as if George is actually saying the same words as me. Yeah. Ha ha. <laughs> you, can't, you can't go ha ha. <laughs> and I think Ronnie would say the same. You know, I can just sit here and do that automatically now, mm. straight away. Open on vowels, closed on consonants. Yeah, it's muscle memory. <laughs> yes, just yeah. do it. Both hands. Yeah, yeah, and and in a lot of like um, Phil Phil Fletcher is another fantastic puppeteer that that I yes. have interviewed. He he was he was seen in a deleted scene which you can check out on um, TGM Productions fantastic channel. Right, <laughs> extra bonus hints and bits and bobs and random nonsense from yours truly uh he was he was saying he was saying a similar thing and it's and and for me um I, i'll i'll say a little bit about me for a second for me i'm i'm a i, I love puppets i've got a from from the corner of me i've got a whole rack of right. puppets and one puppet handmade by me and my mum um and and that, it's it's like it's a skill that that is just like incredible you watch him do it and then you mm. try and imitate it and and it's really interesting because I I'm one of those people that love just sitting and watching TV just all the time and you you watch it and you learn from it so I get well, ideas yes. and inspiration and puppeteering is like you watch Jim Henson work and you watch it every oh, yeah. it's just inc incredible mm. and where where did where where does where did that skill come from did you learn whilst on the job. Well, yes, because as I say, I worked with uh, Violet for two years mm. um, doing puppetry and, and lip syncing is 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 the thing and, and, and keeping the puppet alive. But also, you see, if I sh show like that Zippy, yeah. he's he's straight on there. Whereas George, if I put him straight on, that's no good. Yeah. You have to then tip your wrist 
Mm. Else otherwise, that see, that's the same, but all yeah. you can see is his nose. <laughs> so you've got to then bend your hat. So it's the yeah. eyes. You've got to lead, lead with the eyes. So I've got my hand like that for Zippy, but my hand like that for George. Yeah, wow, that's that's because it's heavier. The nose is heavier, isn't it? That's right, and and you've got to lower it so that the eyes are in shot. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, you're just seeing throat, and that's where, when you make a puppet, you've got to remember that as well. That it, the people have to see the eyes. Yeah, uh, and often, especially with things like kids and stuff, often they can be sat on the floor and you're behind a booth. Uh, so again, straight yeah. away, all they can see yeah. is on. So. When you make one, make sure the eyes are. Yeah. Because otherwise, you'd have to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because um, comfort, comfort is important. Because yeah. you you can have your arm up there for a long, long time. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Because um, but big big bird is one of those puppies that when you watch, when you learn about how it how it's operated, you mm. you don't know how he's lasted that long because he's got one arm up in the air, one well, arm yes. in there, and, yep. and he's in there. And mm. for, for bungles a lot like um slimmer, so there's so there's a lot you're a lot more incompatible. Whereas for, yes. whereas for like um Big Bird, he's got enough room because Vincent's a little more bulkier. There's not enough room for a monitor to see out and have right. around the walls, and and it, and it's rather interesting. But um, my but the last thing that my viewers will want to know: where can they see your stuff or rewatch stuff you've done? Oof. Well, I mean, again, it's, it's, there's a lot of it um, on YouTube, isn't there? All the all the rainbow stuff. I haven't got a, a YouTube channel of my own. Um, I think there is a bit of me singing stars from Le Mis somewhere. Um, and I still perform now. They can come and see me this year in pantomime, in crew. Um, I'll be playing the Queen in Sleeping Beauty at the Crew Lyceum. Um, because that's, I didn't tell you the story, I became a pantomime dame yeah. because um, Bungle was in panto yeah. with someone you, who you probably won't remember, his name was John Inman. Yes, I, I do know him. Uh, from Are You Being Served? I'm yes, free. Oh, he, he was playing the dame yeah. and Bungle was in panto with him and he was taken poorly and he suggested that I should go on for him as the under, as an understudy. So with two hours notice, I had to go to the theater. I rec recorded Bungle's voice mm. for the ASM, assistant stage manager, to put Bungle on yeah. and, and be me. And then I went on as, as the dame, as Dame Trot, Jack, Jack and the Beanstalk's mother. Um, and I think, that was probably one of the worst moments of my life and a lot of actors' lives when they announced to the audience that the star of the show isn't there yeah. and it's, you know, Malcolm Lord is going to be doing it instead. Yeah. And you hear an audience of 1,600 people all go, oh. <laughs> and you think, no, they, they hate me already. Yeah. And it, you know they're disappointed and they don't really want to see you. It, it's a hard, hard yeah. feeling. Um, but I'm pleased to say I, I, I did the best I could and, and they gave me a standing ovation at the wow. end. But the most difficult bit yeah. for that was that there was a scene with Bungle with Dame Trot. Yeah. So suddenly I was talking to myself. <laughs> so I was talking going, Oh, hello, Bungle, how are you? And then my voice was going, oh, I'm all right. And it was like, this is weird. And of course, I, I, I kept wanting to say what Bungle was saying as well. <laughs> um, but it was, it was very odd. And then I was thinking, oh my God, the audience mustn't twig that that's really me. <laughs> so, yeah. so, but from then on, um, I've, I've played a pantomime dame every year since um which is another crazy thing yeah. to do but still so uh well well thank you for letting me interview you my pleasure uh, and i hope you guys enjoyed this video now if you want to see more from from malcolm you'll be able to watch a very bizarre um upcoming deleted scene um 
which which will will be very funny, um, <laughs> hopefully, because my deleted scenes have got value of entertainment more on my part rather than yours. But hope right. you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, go to TGM Productions for the deleted scene. Time or time out. Bye. Bye.